Hey everyone, welcome to another Looker Studio tutorial. In this one, we're gonna take a look at how to create a scorecard that shows the number of days remaining in a month. To do so, we're also have, we'll also have to learn how to figure out how many days there is in a month and how many days have passed. All right, so let's get to it. So we're in Looker Studio, edit mode. Let's create our first um, scorecard. So we have a scorecard over here. Um, actually, let me just copy and paste this. And we're going to go to edit data source over here and create a calculated field. The formula we're going to use is this one here. And we're going to call that number of days in month. All right, let me explain to you a bit what this does. So date diff is basically just doing, uh, just calculating how many um, days there is between two dates, All right? Um, this is the end date and this is the start date of our date range over here. This thing here is basically looking at the date range and returning the year. So in this case, this would be 2023. And this look at the end date of our date range and return the month and add one. So that's important. So this is looking at November 5, so it returns November, but then plus one, so it returns December. And as for the day, it returns December 1st. For the start date, it returns 2023. November and November 1st. So this basically tells us that there is 30 days in between um, November 1st and December 1st. That's what this formula does. All right, so we're gonna save that. I'm just gonna give this a two because I already have that um, in my field. And there you have it. So you have the numbers of days in month. So if I was to go, let's say, and we select last month, this return 31. All right, then since I selected the whole date range, there's no days remaining. So now we have to figure out how many days have passed. To do so, we have to create a field that will basically look at the selected date range, take the last date of the date range, and calculate how many days um, have passed since uh, the first date. So it, it should calculate five here, right? Um, so here's the formula. But as you can see, we have another calculated field in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is extract the last date of our date range. All right, so this is, we're gonna call that the last date of range. And I'm just gonna give it a two. And this is very simple. We're just gonna take the max of our date range. So my, my date field res, right now is called created date. So we're gonna take the max of that. So this basically, if I was to create a table here just to show you how this works and give this the last, actually the last, date of range, as you can see, it returns November uh, 5th, 2023. All right. Uh, but that's not enough. We need, now we have five and we, we know that the start of the month, how many days have passed in the month. So we just have to calculate basically if it's the fifth, then, then what is the rest of the formula is going to look like? 
give me a second here. Um, so again, we're going to go back in here and create another field. And that's the formula we're going to use. And we're going to call this one elapsed days in month. So again, we're using the date time um, diff. And what it does is it takes the end date. So the end date is the num November 5, the one we just created. Uh, it takes the start of month of last date range. So this is my bad. We're going to actually have to create another field. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, maybe more um, one where you don't have to create as many fields. Um, Let's take it this one, start of month of last date range. The reason I did it that way is that by doing it that way, we can, this will work not only for the current month, but also if you were to select a past date range, this would still work. All right. So just to give you an example, looks at the date range and does not really care about what is today's date. So you might find other solution online that relies on today's date, um, but it would break if you were to look at a past um, date range. But this solution is, is a bit more flexible. It, it will work with past date range as well. So just to give you an example, in October, we have 31 day. With the date range selected, we know 16 days have elapsed since the first. So 15 days are remaining. So this still works. So that's why I um, did it that way. It's a bit more complicated, but it's way more flexible. All right. Um, so just to go back here, um, we have to create this field. So this will basically, if we were to, I'm just going to show you what it does. And we're going to just do that here. All right. So it creates again, um, a date from, it takes the last date of the date range. So November 5th. And so now it knows that the month is November and it's going to give us the start of that month. The reason I did not do min and just place the date range the same way I did with the max date range again is to have more flexibility. All right, because it, it would break Otherwise, I, I won't go into t too much details here, uh, but you have to create that extra field that will basically look at the last date of your date range, figure out the month and return the first day of that month, which is what this does. So now you have those two fields, last date and start date. Um, so you're ready to create that last formula. So we're going to go over here and use those two field that we created. So the last date of range and start of month of last date range. I know it's a mouthful, but it works. And we're going to call that elapsed days in month. Um, and I'll, I'll just place it two here because I already have that field. Um, in my field. So that's how you create that one. Uh, so we can, we can use it just to show you elapse days in month. We're going to do number of days in month. And now we can create a remaining days in month, which is basically just this number minus this number. All right. 
So how can we create that one? We're just going to go over here, create a field. And this one again is very simple. It's just number of days in month that we created elapsed days in month that we just created. And we're going to add um, this. Maybe we didn't create one for this and call this remaining days in month. All right. And there you have it. So fully functional dynamic also based on your date range. Um, I know there's plenty of solution online, but some of them don't work anymore. Uh, so hopefully this one helps you out. Um, this is how I do it. And one great thing you can do with this, and I'm going to show you a tutorial on another video is how to create with this a monthly goal tracker. So now that you know how many days there is in a month, how many days have passed, you can now create a goal tracker that will would tell you uh, based on your objectives, how many new customers you have to book, how many you've done so far, how many left, are you on pace to reach your target before the end of the month? And how many, how many per days do you need to do to reach those objectives? So stay tuned in the next video. I will show you that formulas will be included in the, in the descriptions. And if you go on my website, there will be a written tutorial on how to do it as well. All right. Happy dashboarding.